Hi Anu. Hi. How are you? Very good. Tell me. So uh, we have Anu Gandhi from Origa Hospitality. They run, along with his partners, he runs a lot of uh, restaurants around the city, Bonobo and Jamjar. Uh, two of the prominent uh, properties that he's got, along with other stuff in hospitality. So we're just going to understand his journey. What has it been uh, uh, over the last ten years? They're going to be cel celebrating their tenth anniversary now. So Anup, how did you start this off? Uh, this actually, I ventured into hospitality at a at a very early stage. I mean, about when I was twenty three, and we started. You know, we thought about opening. Uh, cool uh, restaurant bar where you know people like me or like minded people can hang and so uh, with my college friend school friend uh, Neville and a couple of other people we started uh, this place called Bonobo which is based in Bandra Linking Road it uh, this this project was started purely out of passion not knowing what this industry has the outcomes the good the bad the ugly it was just passion of having a place which is uh, you know going to so many places as a child i always felt that places missed out something missed a heart missed a soul and we always wanted to build a place that where we could hang we could be we feel comfortable that's you know that's the place yeah and i think nowadays a lot of entrepreneurs do that because you know you you see that there's a gap in your life and yeah. you see that okay fine you know you want to live maybe that kind of a lifestyle and yeah. that's where you then say that okay fine you know i am there and there might be so many others like me why yeah. don't i give this opportunity yeah. but why just the food business is there something that you like about it why not some other space uh the reason food was because when we started we were more like people's person you know uh, where we like to entertain people hang with people it was something that was something that we were very passionate about right uh we didn't think about tech or something else because uh, everything is there but it's not like you know how hospitality is close with your customers or with people and it's fun and the way we saw it uh, we felt that there is like a lot of need for a, a you know like a a personal touch in hospitality which was completely missing like people were just opening restaurants because they and very you know very stereotypical style of places which mm -hmm. were not uh, very cool, edgy, uh, and and we wanted to definitely bring that edge to food, to music, to drinks, to everything. Right. So when we started, we also started with things that were very new to the city, like you know making your own cocktails behind mm -hmm. the bar with music. We we had in fact platforms for more than eight nine hundred artists who've come and performed, and musicians who've evolved at our place from like stand up comedians to. Uh, musicians that play jazz music or electronic music mm. national international and and, it, and it's been something that we are all passionate about we're right. passionate about music and food so of course drinks too right. that's why we did this yeah so it was it was more about making sure you give that personal touch that was required yeah. to the customers that you felt was not there at the same time yeah. trying to keep something edgy and cool yeah. and you know what has been your background did you have some uh, education or experience in hospitality or it was just you know uh, three guys who said let's start off something and then you know we'll reinvent uh, on the way how was it uh, it was actually uh, uh, I, I had no experience in hospitality I was uh, I had passed out from college uh, Sydney College of Commerce and then uh, I was hunting for jobs in fact, I did a small time job in Bombay in a call center. Then I went to Pune. I did a job for a year and a half. Came back thinking I would get into automobile industry, uh, maybe open a factory or something like that. But of course, that was not my interest. I did start something in trading of auto components, but it was money making then as a child, but not of any interest. It was the, like the most boring thing that I could do. And that's when I thought that, you know, if I have to keep myself busy, and if I have to be on my feet, and if I have to do something fun, mm. this is what it is. And when I when I ventured into it, there was so many angles, so many things to look at. It was like 24 hours or less because the creativity was sky's the limit. Right. 
I, I could give people the food that I wanted. I could make people see things the way I wanted them to see. Mm. Yeah, there were times when we were wrong at it, and there were times when people loved it, and it became like a trend. It became like a thing for people. Like, wow, this is the way you go and party. This mm. is the way you go eat food. This is the trend for new style of dishes. So, it was something that I could showcase myself. Right, yeah. and and. You know, did was that a challenge because not having a hospitality background? What was the challenges you faced while you were starting up? So it was a challenge, big time in in terms of understanding the industry. See, there are two things to this industry. One is the front and the back, which is like any other industry. The back end is management skills, uh, financial skills, legalities, which I guess are an issue everywhere. Reason being is a country still trying to put things into perspective. But then, the issue that I faced was the front end, where it is dealing with your staff, dealing with hospitality, creating menus, getting a produce, uh, uh, getting raw material, uh, just to make a good dish. It's not about just getting the ingredient and making it. It's about getting the produce. So in hospitality, you really need to know how to deal with your customers, how to deal with your staff, how to deal with uh, you know various factors that make. The restaurant happen, make it operational. So for that, I would suggest anybody who gets into this industry definitely has to have some hospitality background, either a course, either a internship, or either like some kind of training. Very important, very necessary. And how do you see that now? You know, if you were to give an advice to a younger you, what is it that you would tell? Uh, Firstly, an internship or a course very necessary. Right. Maybe like six months or something, just to figure out what what's going on. Like right. you know, uh, it's not just about being in a cool place, selling food, taking the money, and done. There's lots to be done to build a culture, a vibe in a place. Mm. Hospitality is no more become. Uh, I make dosa, I make pav bhaji, and I sell. I make pasta, I make pizza, and I sell. No, it's all about culture. It's about vibe. It's about uh you know the 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 experience, uh, the experience yeah. of the place it's about what your concept is so there are a lot of things to it this the whole concept bit is very is very nascent stage in india right which wasn't there earlier earlier was what hmm. north indian food eh? indian food eh? south indian food eh? you know it was pretty much very stereotype right. now it's become into concepts into vibes into yes. cultures and things so i would recommend the person to definitely work for uh, at least like six months mm-hmm. to a year or somewhere. Yeah, right. for sure. So uh, you know, in, a, in in an industry where not a lot of restaurants and lounges survive for a very long time, you're celebrating ten years. What is the secret to it? What made that happen? How did that happen? I guess uh, maybe I was ready to sweat it out more than the rest. Yeah. I, I, the thing is, we've in fact uh, to celebrate these ten years, we've been through. Like some mad kind of uh, roller coaster rides. It's 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 definitely not been as easy as it looks. Ten years, we've gone through really trouble times and tough times also. But yeah, the only thing is we had the strength to fight it out and be there and like, you know, be like, yes, we're gonna get back on our feet. Right. Uh, uh, so any story that you remember? Uh, so I mean, uh, the thing. Let me start with like the first story. So uh, we were maybe a year and a half old. Uh, the licensing in this industry is not very clear. There could be some restaurants with 20 licenses, some with 14, and some with 10. Like, and all could be legit. Like, it's just not clear how many licenses are required to run the restaurant. Well, now the framework has become much easier and better, but this wasn't the case 10 years back. So when we started, uh, we were we were halfway through our licensing and we got pretty much nine, 99 or 100% of our licensing. And then when we were about to get our last license, we were informed by one of the authorities that the building that we are in does not exist as per government plans. Okay? And this is <laughs> hilarious. Our money is on the line. We've got most of our licenses. We've started business. But this license was required because, as per the government rules to run business. And 
we didn't know a way out mm. so we applied to the government for the license where there was a policy which said that if you apply for it and you don't get reply in 90 days it's deemed given mm. we would we thought we've already got it because you know whatever running around we did and paperwork we collected and stuff like that a year and a half two later we one of the government authorities came and said that can we have a look at your license and then we said that these are the license they said okay where is this license it mm. said we've applied for it but we've not got it and you know this is what we were told that it's deemed given if that's they said no till you don't have that license you cannot operate and this happened after 2 years of running business paying taxes paying employees paying all the government revenues possible mm. and after, so basically after that we started running around trying to get that license of course you know help in some papers here there we went to the government authority through connections and that's when we uh, mm. got our license which is ridiculous if the building as per the government doesn't exist how could i get my other licenses right and if that's the case how could the other authorities mm. give me so a lot of transparency uh, there was no there, there was no transparency right now the government is completely abolished the police which actually doesn't play a role in hospitality mm. to give any license to us because you know it, they don't monitor anything they don't do anything mm. their rule the job of the police is actually to to ca- take care of the law and order which they are doing so they don't need to be involved in the hospitality sector right which was earlier the case and no more no longer the case now mm. which the government definitely has worked on and removed uh, you know uh, that as an important part mm-hmm. but yeah things like that were just not transparent not clear a uh, lot of issues in policy making and you know minor minor things which were just overlooked mm. but how do you bring that how do you know that what is what is your process to you know be successful to knowing your customer knowing your brand uh the way you know your brand is by interacting and being on So basically we spent a lot of time for a few years right. at Bonobo itself to be to meet our customers to understand what they like what's the issue with the place what they don't like what comforts them what doesn't comfort them over a period of time it kind of helped us to you know narrow it down and understand what we are right more than what we you know what we are not we 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 got to know what we are and that helped us to narrow down things like okay if we are this this is if if this is how people who come here think i'm sure this is what they like mm. and slowly 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 we got to know them even better and better as we did each and every event right because like i said we built this place mm. the way we wanted it to be so the people who got attracted to it are also the way we think are the people who got attracted to it right, right. so it made things much easier for us mm. so today if i had to do something i know if i do this yeah people will like it if i do that people will be like you know you're mm. like any other place kind right. of thing yeah so it's more about spending more time with your customers understanding what they absolutely are absolutely absolutely also the communication of my brand to the people and who we are right right was very crisp and clear right. we were not just all over the place we mm. were we were what we were we were not like any other place like acha idhar ye bhi hota hai wo bhi hota hai wo bhi hota hai no mm. we were not and and you so you all have also now gotten into a delivery kitchen format and, yeah uh, you know that model has come come in predominantly because of technology being yeah. so widely available absolutely and you've got uh, you know the swiggy zomato scootsies of the world uh, you know so how do you see technology and social media shaping the way you know the hospitality sector is moving how is it that that is impacting your business so i feel that uh, uh, yeah. let me talk about technology technology is actually kind of eased things out for a lot for our industry where they've opened up a different avenue of you know people who didn't think of delivery reason being as hiring more manpower and doing delivery and this and that technology has helped things become much easier where people there's uh, you know can look at a lot of side businesses with mm-hmm. existing businesses using technology right and with technology i say like uh, you know where you, where people can start delivery kitchens people can start uh, selling things out of the house or people can start do, you know making things and especially selling it online mm. is definitely help them and when it comes to social media 
social media according to me is like a great medium to be out there and to reach a great number of people uh, in what you're doing yes of course there is something as you know uh, people get to copy or see things very easily and that right. that happens a lot because right. of social media because uh, a lot of people instead of innovating and working on things have started taking the easy way out of copying either menus or food trends or uh, recipes or you know uh, you know uh, how you showcase your food and stuff like that uh, but also the other side of it is it's helped in promotion people on the go can see what's going on social media keeps people updated on what what's happening around the city yeah, who's doing what sword, you know you yeah. can get the good also and the bad yeah, also yeah. because then you because of delivery kitchen has it impacted your business in any way because now you know people have access to calling food at home right is we visiting a restaurant you know how does that work is it impacting your business is it helping it grow how do you see it moving forward uh, so i'm looking at it in a very positive way according to me it's not impacted the business in fact it's helped us even grow because as we got these platforms which supported delivery and other things we started a kitchen ourselves in delivery you know right. uh, having the delivery using these platforms when it comes to social media also i look at a very positive side it's definitely helped us go viral it's helped us get more business it's helped us get more recognition earlier the limitations were only to uh, you know it was either uh, newspapers or either maybe like some uh, online article mm. back in the days uh, but now social media is i can easily reach out to customers far and beyond you know be, uh, people who are traveling people who are out of the country people mm. who are uh, you know who might want to come and pay me a visit right i have access to it right. and so now it's been about 10 years yeah what is the next milestone what is your vision next 2 3 years how do you look at uh, your businesses scaling up how do you look at your properties scaling up uh, uh so uh, what's happening with us is now we now over a period of time we you know how trends have changed and things like that even with our business things have changed like uh we were earlier we started with a bar business and as we progressed we and got married and things like that we opened a place which was more family oriented and things like that and now we look at more the restauranting uh, bit which we are focusing on that's jamjar as a brand where we plan to grow organically slowly uh, uh with more focus on food and our product that we're doing and showcasing to people right so, so is your lifestyle has also evolved yeah. into your business yeah, which yeah. is there. exactly that's exactly what we've done right. at a younger age you always want to do fun things yes. as you grow older yeah <laughs> and so. what about so what about your uh financials funding you no know, little bit about over there how do you look at those aspects of your business how do you bring in that financial discipline how did you bring in how much time did you take to break you in in your business uh, uh so what happened with us is when we started we all all the partners we put in our own personal money by taking loans and you know uh, personal borrowing from family and stuff like that and uh, started the business as we started as we progressed we saw of course definitely the business is doing well and it's got good returns and stuff like that and as opportunities came we always thought of you know going forward when the question came of going forward there were two ways either we dilute ourselves and get an investor or either we just put in our own money that we want and plow it back into the mm. company to grow and that's exactly what we did instead of getting an investor and having a gun on our head mm. we thought of plowing our money back into the industry mm. borrowing from family taking business loans from banks and you know running the and starting the our second place when that happened and that got secured and things like that we when we started the third place we did the similar thing right. and we're pretty much in the process of being debt free in the maybe another 6 to 9 months but why not funding uh the thing with funding is when a person wants to put in funds into another business he's looking for a certain kind of return hmm. and the kind of returns that people think they can get is it, it is not at that easy hmm. because Uh, you know like any other industry even this industry definitely has its ups and downs and uh, people i mean just by plowing a lot of money into it doesn't mean you'll get those, that much return because you there is a limimitation interesting thing that uh, 
put a gun to your head so yeah. can you can you elaborate a little bit what i mean by the gun on the head is uh, basically when investors come in the reason they invest and they call investors is because they invest to get returns right. they're not investing to stay they're investing to put their money and get an exit soon when they can double their money triple their money four times their money uh they expect that in a very short period mm. which uh the reason they put it in the company is because they feel against all the other investments that they have this is the better bet like mm. maybe a share market or their existing business or any other business so when they expect that kind of return it has to be a comfortable return most of the investors expect it in a very short span and a quick return mm. and it's not that easy in this industry if you want to grow organically unless and until you just go on opening not knowing which is you know which leg is making profit which is making loss mm. because there are a lot of brands they open maybe like 5 6 but out of 6 maybe like one is not making returns and five are making returns and mm. then it evaluates to the same thing because at the end you're not taking back anything because sure. this guy is draining out everything that the rest of the what about uh, your personal money habits yeah what 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 are your thoughts on money how have you managed your money yeah. and what what is your mindset towards that and do you see that also coming in your business or do you say that okay fine you know that's me my business is separate and i'm going to handle it in two different ways you know uh so as you know like have you been conservative with our business growth i've been very conservative with my money also i mean that the little money that you know we made by growing and taking back home uh what happened is Uh, I I was very conservative about it I- investing in small little things uh, to make sure it's diversified and it's not just you know back into the same business mm. so uh, diversified it into various other small little things mm. uh, invested it into other small company that was running mm. uh, to just have a different angle to the return on money coming in kind of thing yeah yeah and uh, last thing what's your ideal day like Uh, an entrepreneur how how does it go uh so uh the thing is uh, with hospitality a lot of people have a misconception that you know the owner has to be at the outlet mm. i mean uh, that's absolutely not true mm. because just imagine if our owner has five restaurants can he be at five places no mm. and why does he need to be like does a guy who owns a factory is you know is on the machine or is at the counter no he's not right mm. like the reason is because ev- like every in- other industry even this industry has systems sops which we've set over a period of time mm. systems uh and what happens is so i typically spend more of my day in the day where i look into purchases where i look into payments where i look at operational issues where i look at uh, quality control where i look at marketing ideas creatives thinking for the evening what's going to happen or what's going to happen the next day at my place mm. basically that's the plan that i i mean that's what i do generally in the day mm. so uh, i mean that pretty much keeps me busy and on my toe because mm. every day there's something to work on something to do and uh, yeah taking care of your purchases production mm. uh, so all of that it's like a breakdown you... wastages reports right. sales bill fridge so there's enough to take care of in the day yeah and the one word that defines your entire entrepreneurial journey <laughs> uh, damn just one thing that comes from top of your mind oh god uh, mm, hectic man <laughs> it's hectic <laughs> it's hectic but it's fun it's 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 really fun yeah yeah thank you so much Andrew. thanks man thank you Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. Like and share this video with as many friends as possible. Subscribe to our channel to learn more on how you can scale your business. Thank you.